Oh, the thunderstorm is still going on. Okay, we have not checked this place yet, so we're going to head here and check out the little Lethry Manor. Well, these are the guard quarters. I don't suppose that we will find them there. Maybe this is who we're looking for. And this better be important. Oh. Bedrooms. Bedrooms sounds good. I suppose you're looking for a tavern. I'm sure I can't help you. It's kind of weird when they're private bedrooms and they say, oh, you're, are you looking for a tavern by coming into our bedroom? Watch out, Nanda. Oh, this is where I came from. Private quarters. I just want to appeal to fairness. You've shown that you understand us, Nighty, and I will support this resolution. This means I now have three supporters. That's good. So we have convinced Athen Serefi to support House Telvani. And we have also convinced two more people. And for some reason, I did not. Ah, okay. I did not put the to-do list correctly. So we now have One, two. Okay, that's interesting. We, we, our our journal only speaks of two people, so maybe we should convince more, which means we need more magic, which means we need to sleep. We're not going to anger them by uh, sleeping in their bedroom, though. We're going to head to the Mage's Guild. Um, I thought this was the exit. Oh. This definitely is. Okay, so let's head back to the Mage's Guild through the rain. Have a quick nap and then with full magicka head back to convince one more councilman. Also we might be able to buy two soul gems with um, strong souls because we are stupidly rich and we are actually way too weak to capture the souls ourselves which means we should get stronger at some point where is the communal bedroom this is not it oh yeah okay this is i think where it is this is where it is and we slept for 10 hours to recharge our magicka. I just went into the wrong direction from the get-go. Let's head back upstairs and... Now we have a nice sunny day. Well, cloudy still, but... I think it's never actually sunny here. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember that it was. I mean, I could go back in the over 80 episodes and check, but too lazy. Okay. 
so let's check the area to the right. This is again the Moratong Guild Hall. You see, I can't remember anything, and this is Arabar Manor. And I think this was the one who we did what not. Have is better be important. Okay, we don't need that book anymore. Just checked for blue, for blue text. Private quarters, and we basically just look for the owners of the house. To see. This better be important. I'm sorry, the um, drinking, drinking fizzy drinks makes me. Mm. Yeah. Makes me full of air. Uh, what now? Yeah, there we can appeal to fairness if we don't fail casting our persuasive spell. In the course of events, it is sometimes necessary to put aside the childish notions of allies and enemies and focus instead on a debate in which propositions are considered based only upon their merits. This indeed is one of those times that you have defended your position well, answering all of my concerns. I therefore shall support the revocation of the major skill monopoly, lest history look upon my actions with a baleful eye and claim that I allowed expediency to overwhelm principle. So we have three people. One, two, three. So we can go back to Master Aaron. Oh, in order to get out, I could also use the temple teleportation spell. If I don't feel casting it. We shouldn't have broken any of the major skills rules, by the way, um, because we're not allowed to steal or kill from other mages, so they should not cast us out, even though it was it is a very dick move, actually. But I always sided with a major skill in pre previous plays, and I kind of want to do something different, so I'm basically being stronger on the House Telvani now than on the major skill. I also sided strongly with the major skill, and then. Um, I was more a brawler type in this game. So this playthrough is completely different from, from what I'm used to in this game. And I have to say it is not as easy as if you just barge in with a weapon and kill them. I mean, I could play through the whole game just with the weapon that you find in the first cave, the Sparking Dagger. Come on, I haven't got all day, you know. Which is kind of weird. Ah, damn, I wanted to check for the soul gems with the enchanter. Well, next time. And here we are at uh, Master Ryan's chambers. I Let's see what he has to say about our accomplishments. First, have him leave the hallway, or else he will get stuck again. Master Ryan, I got three councilmen to uh, agree to work against the major skill monopoly. You have convinced at least three, at least three councillors. This deserves a reward. Perhaps you should use this glove. I enchanted it myself many years ago. So what about the monopoly now? You already convinced enough councillors on this issue. Soon we will take it before the Grand Council. 
Master Orion, can you tell me something about gathering strong souls? The souls of a summoned creature will work just as well. Just summon a storm matron, cast soul trap on it, and dispatch it. Do this twice while carrying a powerful soul gem and give the gems to Lunella Hilarion. Well, we can actually try that. Um, but I think... I don't know if you were equipped to fight a Storm Atronach. But we can also ask for more court chores. There is another Telvanni in trouble. I do not normally interfere with these manners, but I've taken an interest in this one. I need someone to stop the Red Orin attack on Favs, Anders and Shishi. Shishi, where is that? Several Red Orin have infiltrated Shishi, and the Tavani Faves Andes, uh, Faves Andes has gone into hiding. Shishi is a Velothi tower in the middle of the Foyada, the Foyada Banidat, northwest of Margan. Leave Margan, go east past the Siltstrider, then follow the Foyada north and west. If you cannot find Faves Andes, look for a skull on a desk, which opens a door to a secret storage place. Okay, I think we're actually going to do exactly that. So Master Orion says free shishi. And come on, there we go. Oh no 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 don't get stuck there. Oh, he's 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 continuing to walk. Let's let's just stand here. And, yes. Ah, uh, okay. Welcome. I feel as though I should know. Yeah. Eek. Please, by all means. Of course, we could also use slow fall here, but we don't have the spell. So we need to levitate down. Shishi is reachable from Margan, which is down here, I think. Yeah, that was exactly. I know that's more like Mar. Okay, Margan is then. Who are. Gnarmok. Laod. Let's first see where we need to go. Is that uh, that place? Yes, so it is Aldrun, and then either we can use the Silt Strider or something like that, or we just walk over through Balizra to Magan. Good. Also, I want to check uh, what kind of sun. Um, only a least Bonewalker and a Skeletal Minion, and I don't think that the Ancestor's Ghost... Oh, that's interesting. Command, Creature, and Humanoid, but yeah, that's not that... Not that interesting. There is... We do have three scrolls of summoning a Golden Saint for 60 seconds, which is something we could try. But I don't know if we fought a Golden Saint yet. I don't think so, and I guess they are too strong. On the other hand, you never know when you never try, right? So let's head somewhere where there is nobody. Maybe a rest, and then try to summon and soul trap a Golden Saint. And we can rest here, that's good. And rest until healed. Okay, so the Golden Saint won't do anything to us until we attack it because we summoned it, so I'm going to save. 
summon the golden. I guess a flame at your neck will also be a grand soul. And now let us see. Soul trap is also just 60 seconds. So this has worked. And now I'm just going to try out how we're going to kill them. Okay, so they need three hits to kill us. And they're not that good with... Or they're, they're very good with handling poison. Or they have a lot of... Um, a lot of hit points, which I guess is what's, what actually is the case. So I'm going to try doing it with a flame atronach instead. Um, soul trap, soul trap, soul trap. There, I was blind. Again here we deal damage, but I don't know if we can do it in the 60 seconds. Yes, we have trapped a soul. Question is, is it big enough? Is we have a bone lord and a flame atronach here. So it could be that these are enough. We need to check by just going back, but we also need the construction contract. And I was thinking we're first going to go here, free that person, and then trying to get that contract. So we're going to free Shishi, and then I just noticed that I did not put in the order of, of events. So let's real quick do that. How's Telvani, my old stronghold, get construction contract there now, and the... I don't know which entry I just changed, but it does not work. But we're just going to, and I'm just going to do it like this, go to Evan Hard, and there we go. So we're heading here. I think it was that way. Um, if I'm not totally confused. Off to Aldrun again. And here we are in Margan, and we're supposed to go northwest, which is this direction. So we can get to Shishi. I'm pretty sure we've already seen the place. Because the name is awfully familiar. But first we need to find the Foyada. I guess this will be easy. Three. Because it's kind of kind of canyon like thing. I guess it's this actually. So we're on the wrong side of the mountain. I might want to go back to Margan and go to head the other way. I think it's it's this here. Also, there are very disturbing noises, so another reason to head the other way. This better be important. So I'm just trying to. 
get out of Margan on the other side, but this is not the way to go. Hoping that I will enter this this foyada. There is a tower here. No exit, I guess. Wall, 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 tower, no exit. Okay. Hmm. As I said, I'm pretty sure we've already been there. Let me just search around for it. Okay, so this could be the Foyada World before, and this might actually be... This might actually be Shishi. If we're lucky, it already is. Because it looks like one of these tombs that you tell Bunny. And there we go, we have found Shishi. So basically the trick was to like head a little bit off the road. And let us now rest first. There is already someone dead here. Who only has common clothing. Let us head deeper to the place. Okay, there are many dead people here. I guess these are the veteran attackers. Indrel, just common clothing. Amring. I mean, something or someone must have killed them. Okay, I'm allowed to sleep here. Is it? It's not safe enough though. And there is also just common stuff in here. You know what? Let us just fill the clothes sets here with the clothes clothes from the corpses just for fun. Just so when the guy gets here, he will have lots of weird clothing in his closet. So we're going to put these there. There we go. And now we can check the other side, the other wing. There is Marielle Amadi. It's just... I have you. Okay, very strong. Let's see poison damage. This this works better, but not not good. What damage do they do? Poison damage. Ah, they have um, they have spell reflection. Okay. So this means if I do this, then I will paralyze myself, I guess. Yes, I am willing to try out new stuff, so... I could try the fireball though, and I could also also use spell making to make a stronger. Let's try the fireball and then use spell making to make a stronger fire bite. Actually, Die, and the fireball means we don't need to. I mean, we can only cast it twice, and this was the wrong button. Yeah, this is not very good. And I think they also have a poison damage thing. It's not that um, they reflected it. Okay. Let's try to make our fire bite stronger and get a shield spell. Since we don't want to run back to Shishi all the time, you just mark this place. And now the sound is gone. 
I think my headphones just are out of battery. Great. Okay, so I resolved the sound issues. Um, basically, my upstairs PC connected to my Bluetooth headphones and took over the audio. Shut that one down and now it's working again. So let me, I did, already did the mark thing. Now we're going to do MC intervention to get out of here. And then we're just going to bring Gnesis. Okay, so let's try her to Aldrune to get a, that's here. Or we should have a Spellmaker actually here in the temple. Is it there? Uh, he sells spells. No, no, I'm just, I'm not going to go downstairs. I'm not going to search the whole temple because I do know there are spell makers in the Mages Guild. Whom we just basically betrayed, but they should not know that it was us. Plus, as I said, my allegiances lie with House Telvani. And the guy also is down here. Maybe he's trying to shield from the sun. It's still raining in Aldrin, which is weird. This is... Normally it's always just sandstorm. I mean, I'm not complaining, I'm just confused. I must be gone. So, Spellmaker, I have no clue where they are. Is Edwina the Spellmaker here? Let's check that out. No, she's just I must here. Say I find you most interesting right Are you the Spellmaker? No. I do enjoy a good conversation. No spell making service. Quickly, Outlander, or no spell making service. I mean, come I on, there should be enchanting. That's not where I want what to do go. You want of me, Outlander? I want to know where I can make spells. Is it the guild guide? Travel person? Are you a spell maker? No, I don't want to go to Balmora. There I know where the spell maker is. Is it one of the two in the entrance area, or doesn't Aldrun have a spellmaker? Which would be kind of weird, I think. You told me that if her brother won, she would be sister to the King of Weirest, and Remen would want to keep her for the Alliance. But her brother Helseth lost, and has fled with his mother back to Morrowind, and still Remen has not left her to marry me. Lady Jaleen took a long, slow drag of the hookah, and blew out dragon's breath, so the scent of blossoms perfumed her gilded chamber. You make a very poor advisor, Kael. I might have spent my time romancing the King of Cloudrest, or Eleanor, instead of the wretched royal husband of Queen Morgia. Kael knew better than to hurt his lady's vanity by the mere suggestion that the King of Firsthold might have come to love his Dunmer Queen. Instead, he gave her a few minutes to pause and look from her balcony out over the high cliff palaces of the ancient capital. The moons shone like crystal on the deep sapphire waters of the Abikian Sea. It was ever springtide here, and he could well understand why she would prefer a throne in this land than in Cloudrest or Eleanor. Finally, he spoke. The people are with you, my lady. They do not relish the idea of Remen's dark elf heirs ruling the kingdom when he's gone. I wonder, she said calmly, I wonder if as the king would not give up his queen for want of alliances, whether she would give herself out of fear. Of all the people of Firsthold, who most dislikes the Dunmer influence on the court? Is this a trick question, my lady? asked Kael. The Trabite monks, of course. 
The credo has ever been for pure Altmer bloodlines on Somerset, and among the royal families most of all. But my lady, they make very weak allies. I know, said Jeline, taking up her hookah again thoughtfully, a smile creeping across her face. Morgia has seen to it that they have no power. She would have exterminated them altogether had Remen not stopped her for all the good they do for the country folk. What if they found themselves with a very powerful benefactress, one with intimate knowledge of the court of Firsthold, the chief concubine of the king, and all the gold to buy weapons with that her father, the king of Skywatch, could supply? Well armed and with the support of the country people, they would be formidable, nodded Kyle. But as your advisor, I must warn you. If you make yourself an active foe of Queen Morgia, you must play to win. She has inherited much of her mother Queen Berencia's intelligence and spirit of vengeance. She will not know I'm her foe until it's too late, shrugged Jialin. Go to the Trabite Monastery and bring me Friar Lilim. We must strategize our plan of attack. For two weeks, Remen was advised about growing resentment in the countryside from peasants who called Morgia the Black Queen, but it was nothing that he had not heard before. His attention was on the pirates on a small island off the coast called Kalui's Lar. They had been more brazen as late, attacking royal barges in organized raids. To deliver a crushing blow, he ordered the greatest part of his militia to invade the island, an incursion he himself would lead. A few days after Remen left the capital, the revolt of the Trabite monks exploded. The attacks were well coordinated and without warning. The chief of the guards did not wait to be announced, bursting into Morgia's bedchamber ahead of a flurry of maidservants. My queen, he said, it's a revolution! By contrast, Gialine was not asleep when Kael came to deliver the news. She was seated by the window, smoking her hookah and looking at the fires far off in the hills. Morgia is with the council, he explained. I am certain they are telling her that the Trebite monks are behind the uprising, and that the revolution will be at the city gates by morning. How large is the revolutionary army in contrast to the remaining royal militia? asked Gialin. The odds are well in our favor, said Kael, though not perhaps as much as we hoped. The country folk, it seemed, like to complain about their queen, but stop short of insurrection. Primarily, the army is composed of the monks themselves and a horde of mercenaries your father's gold bought. In a way of thinking, it's preferable this way. They are more professional and organized than a common mob. Really, they are a true army, complete with a horn section. If that doesn't frighten the Black Queen into abdication, nothing will, smiled Gialine, rising from her chair. The poor dear must be beside herself with worry, and must fly to her side and enjoy it. Gialine was disappointed when she saw Morgia come out of the council chambers. Considering that she had been woken from a deep sleep with cries of revolution, and had spent the last several hours in consultation with her meager general force, she looked beautiful. There was a sparkle of proud defiance in her bright red eyes. My queen! Jialine cried, forcing real tears. I came as soon as I heard. Will we all be slaughtered? A distinct possibility, replied Morgia simply. Jialine tried to read her, but the expressions of women, especially alien women, were a far greater challenge than those of Altmar Man. I hate myself for even thinking to propose this, said Jialine, but... Since the cause of their fury is you, perhaps if you were to give up the throne, they might disperse. Please understand, my queen, I'm thinking only of the good of the kingdom and our lives. I understand the spirit of your suggestion, smiled Morgia, and I will take it under advisement. Believe me, I've thought of it myself, but I don't think it will come to that. Have you a plan for defending us? asked Jialine, contorting her features to an expression she knew bespoke girlish hope. 
The king left us several dozen of his royal battle mages, said Morgia. I think the mob believes we have nothing but palace guards and a few soldiers to protect us. When they get to the gates, they are greeted with a wave of fireballs. I find it highly likely that they will lose heart and retreat. But isn't there some protection they could be using against such an assault? asked Jialine in her best foreign voice. If they know about it, naturally there is. But an unruly mob is unlikely to have mages skilled in the art of restoration, by which they could shield themselves from the spells, or mysticism, by which they could reflect the spells back on my battle mages. That would be the worst scenario. But even if they were well organized enough to have mystics in their ranks, and enough of them to reflect so many spells, it just isn't done. No battlefield commander would advise such a defense during a siege unless he knew precisely what he was going to be meeting. And then, of course, once the trap is sprung, Morgia winked, it's too late for a countering spell. A most cunning solution, your highness, said Gialine, honestly impressed. Morgia excused herself to meet with her battle mages, and Gialine gave her an embrace. Kael was waiting in the palace garden for his lady. Are there mystics among the mercenaries? she asked quickly. Several, in fact, replied Kael, bewildered by her query. Largely rejects from the psychic order, but they know enough to cast the regular spells of the school. You must sneak out the city gates and tell Freya Lilim to have them cast reflection spells on all the front line before they attack, said Gialine. That's most irregular battlefield strategy, frowned Kael. I know it is, fool. That's what Morgia is counting on. There's a gang of battle mages who are going to be waiting on the battlements to greet our army with a barrage of fireballs. Battle mages? I would have thought that King Remen would have brought them with him to fight the pirates. You would have thought that, laughed Jialine. But then we would be defeated. Now go. Friar Lilim agreed with Kael that it was a bizarre, unheard of way to begin a battle. Casting reflection spells on all one's troops, it went against every tradition, and as a Trebite monk, he valued tradition above every other virtue. There was little other choice, though, given the intelligence. He had few enough healers in the army as it were, and their energies could not be wasted casting resistance spells. At dawn's light, the rebel army was in sight of the gleaming spires of First Hold. Freya Lilim gathered together every soldier who knew even the rudimentary secrets of mysticism, who knew how to tap into the elementary conundrums and knots of the energies of Magicka. Though few were masters of the art, their combined force was powerful to behold. A great surge of entangling power washed over the army, crackling, hissing, and infusing all with their ghostly force. When they arrived at the gates, every soldier, even the least imaginative, knew that no spell would touch him for a long time. Friar Lilim watched his army batter into the gate with the great satisfaction of a commander who has counteracted an unthinkable attack with an outrageous defense. The smile quickly faded from his face. They were met at the battlements not by mages, but by common archers of the palace guard. As the flaming arrows fell upon the sieges like a red rain, the healers ran in to help the wounded. The healing spells reflected off the dying men, one after the other. Chaos ruled as the attackers suddenly found themselves defenseless and began a panicked, unorganized retreat. Friar Lilim himself considered bravely holding his ground before fleeing himself. Later, he would send furious notes to Lady Jialine and Kael, but they were returned. Even his best secret agents within the palace were unable to find their whereabouts. Neither had, as it turns out, much previous experience with the torture, and they soon confessed the treachery to the king's satisfaction. Kael was executed, and Gialino was sent back with escort to her father's court of Skywatch. He is still to find a husband for her. Remen, by contrast, has elected not to take a new royal concubine. The common folk of first told consider this break in palace protocol to be more of the sinister alien influence of the Black Queen and grumble to all who will listen. <laughs>